Good morning again. Let's do this. Um, gonna be a little bit more of a mixed day. We are not just jumping in a planter and staying in it. The first thing we gotta do is take care of those beans that we treated last night and get them ready for the customer to come pick up. And then dad needs us to get in the backhoe and go level some dirt off along the field where he is running the field cultivator. Uh, some stuff that we had uh, where we tiled last year that's a little bit rough along the lane or something wanted me to go level it out and then we might go do some discing until we can plant. Have you guys been enjoying all of this great quality corn planting spring field work footage i told you the videos were going to get good hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't yet make sure you don't miss any of them it's free doesn't cost you anything doesn't really gain me anything other than make you more likely to watch my videos and that's what i want so subscribe all right we've got to take the backhoe over to the field where dad's working look at that i've been looking for that change plans never mind I was I misunderstood what he was telling me. He said to level the dirt off along the lane. I assumed he meant in the field that he was working in. Uh, he did not. He meant in the field behind the barn where he worked last night. So uh, we'll go do that. But first, we got to take the field to get his planter. Dropped him off. He's got this one done. So that's good. I'll have to look in the on the uh, my John Deere to see how many acres he's got and planted. There's a neighbor out here with their high-speed discs, two of them, big ones. It takes them very little time to knock out a field doing that. He's flying, too. This here is what Dad wanted me to level out. We had a spot here that just had a bunch of water on it. We had some dirt push-up doing tillage last fall and created a mess, so we, we need to level that off. Oh, man. It's better better it's the best I can do with the backhoe we're gonna go up and grab the disc and um, we'll hit it real quick with the disc a couple times before Phil who is right there gets back here to plant it well Phil didn't even stop at the farm he just took off and went straight back there so we gotta hurry up and do this uh, no GPS display in here which we switched we had to switch some stuff around I had the wrong displays and the wrong tractors and the RTK auto steer wouldn't work with the bean planting tractor and so that's why it's not in here. Phil had it. I think Brock picked it up and it's in one of the trucks but we'll get it before we go to the next field. We just need to make a couple of passes here or over this one spot a couple of times to level it off before he plants it. Okay, we are headed off to the next field. Ah, uh, Dan's doing end rows back there. Which means we could be loading the planter up to go plant, but, um, well, yeah. We need to keep the disc moving, and that should air out for a couple hours, so we'll get to it. We'll get to it. All right, well, we're in the field up and running here. Um, we're pulling our Landall 7431 VT vertical tillage tool. I say vertical tillage like that because this is a disc. Look at it. It's a disc. It looks like a disc. It acts like a disc. It's a disc. I don't care what you call it. Uh, but it, we can pull it fast. It's on a shallower gang angle than uh, a traditional disc would be. And um, it does a pretty decent job. We've had issues with this disc, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good tool. It does a decent job. So uh, this field that we are in, you can see it's turning green. You can also see that it is... Um, bean stubble that has not been touched. Normally we would uh, run our chisel or our, our disc ripper over all of our bean stubble in the fall that is going to be planted to corn. This field will be planted to corn. It was too wet last fall. We could never get it done. And so we're left with what do we do with it here this spring? And uh, the decision we have made is that we're going to hit it with the disc and then dad's going to come down here with the field cultivator. Um, the disc helps break up some of the piles, like right here, where there has been stuff 
stubble wash up from the, the flooding and stuff where there's big piles that the field cultivator would have some trouble with that trash not flowing through it very well uh, this also helps take some of the weeds out a little bit kind of sort of and uh, the field cultivator will do a better job of leveling it taking out the rest of the weeds because it, it has a shovel that's going to actually cut through the ground and, and shear off anything that would still be um, attached or growing there but uh, uh, I think the combination of both of those will leave a really nice smooth seed bed for us to plant into. Kind of a nice change of pace to be doing something different. Well this tractor, she's a little rougher than the 8RX. I'll, someday we'll put the 8RX on the disc and we'll see how that runs it. I bet that will be a, a real sweet setup there. But anyway, um, this field here is right along the St. Joe River. It runs right along those trees. And um, this back end here floods frequently. Uh, and so there's a lot of debris and just stuff washed up, all the residues and piles and stuff over there. And then we've got a sand ridge right where all the grass and stuff starts. It goes up a little bit and there's a sand ridge across, runs all the way up over that way and so there's there's two totally different soil types here it's working totally different it's pulling totally different there's a little draw right through there right before that and it's a little bit wet but um uh for the most part it's all good and, and it's wet because there's residue sitting on it and we need to break that open and that's what this disc is going to do is help uh, uh move that stuff around and let air get into that soil and dry it out a little bit at least that's my theory that's what i'm telling myself and we're going to keep going because of that so but even here you can see where we've just got piles of soybean residue and we just we just need to break them apart and let it air out we are making it across the field here i've uh, i've got the other half done and then i striped out this side so let's see here's the map you can see that kind of like how brock was doing it the other day now we've got to fill in our strips um, it's working up pretty decent, but it does need a little bit of time before we come down here with the field cultivator, I think, just to let that stuff air out. If it was sunny and windy, it would dry out faster, but it's not real sunny today. I think it's warmer outside, but I haven't been outside since 8 o'clock this morning. I've been sitting in here, so hard to tell for sure. Um, but we should only have less than an hour left in this field, and then we can go get the corn planter moving. All right, well, after a lengthy conversation with the parts department at the John Deere dealer, because I need some parts for some meters on the corn planter, I noticed some stuff yesterday when we were doing the plot stuff. It, nothing that's preventing us from running just yet, but things that need to be replaced and fixed. So, um, But they have subbed some parts, and things are different, and they've changed them, and so you got to buy more than just the piece that's broken. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're about done with this field, so I'm doing the end rows along the back and the river back here. And then we're going to uh, head back and load the planter up and go start planting. Done. Oh yeah, this is a sweet ride. Uh, we appear to have a bit of a traffic jam here in the farmyard. Phil's done with the field where we leveled that dirt off this morning. So he's uh, got his planter loaded up, ready to go to the next field. And he's moving his truck up there. Dad just got back from the next field he was doing with the field cultivator. <coughs> he's waiting to get in line at the fuel barrel here we parked that one here and we're rolling out with the corn planter so nothing's happening at the moment but it will be shortly planting corn so we've got I don't even know how much we've got 55 ish acres between these two fields here there's a little one in the front and then the bigger one in the back I think there's 46 in the back field there or something we have enough fertilizer to do it all. We do not, should not, have enough seed to do it all. Um, I don't know how short we're going to be, but I have eight paper bags that uh, I intend to use here. I was going to throw them on the platform, and then it was sprinkling just a little bit. And I looked at the radar, and I'll show you what that shows in just a second when the thing, thing loads. There it is. So you can see we've got a line of showers just kind of moving through. They're real light, sporadic. Um, in fact, we're getting a few light sprinkles now. So point being, I did not want to have bags sitting on the planter open or out in the open uh, where they might get rained on. So I decided to leave them in the barn. We are super close to the farm. It's right over there. So not a big deal. We'll just run back, 
when we need them if we don't get rained out before that. Well, dang it. This might turn into a problem. <sighs> oh well, we're gonna try and finish these ends at least. I'd love to get at least this little field in the front done, but if it's gonna rain like this and get everything wet, won't take long to start sticking to the gauge wheels on the planter, and that's when we shut her down. Sprinkle stopped. We're good. We can keep going, hopefully for a while, but uh, it was getting close there for a second. All right, we got that front field done. We're getting ready to start the back one here. Um, I need a new guidance line. I need a I need a guidance line along this ditch, and it's a curved track. And well, we're gonna we're gonna make one. Um, I did just make a new boundary here. We could try a boundary map or line, but I can see right there where I probably did not follow where Dad uh, did the tillage there. See how that grass is a little different right there? I probably followed that line to make it. So we're going to follow what Dad's done. We're just going to do an A-B curve here. So we're going to try this here. Set track, new track, uh, and then over here we're going to select curve and... I'm gonna do AB curves. I've never figured out how to do the the adaptive curves real well, and we're gonna call this ditch. Nope, nope. Ends. Okay. Okay. So now we got to get where we want to be, and then we hit start. It's going to be harder to do if I'm filming the whole time. We're not going to film the whole time, but we're getting our planter lined up on the edge of the field, kind of the tractor where I want it to be. We're going to set it down, hit start, and now we drive it, and then we'll stop it when we're done, and it should draw us a line that we can follow the next time. Okay. Stop and hit done. Okay. Now we can turn around and we should have some guidance lines there. I threw a marker just in case. But yeah, this looks like it's gonna work. It's basically the same as the old displays were. Just hopefully it works better. Oh. All right, cool deal. I like having guidance lines for my endros. I, I, I've done some in the past for the curves and stuff, and a lot of those lines are not very good, so I haven't been using them very much, but this one, I decided to make a new one. Well, like I said yesterday, this field is the one that we put tile in last summer. Uh, that's why this is uh, where they spread that fertilizer last night. Dad worked it this morning, and we're, we're planting it now. Uh, we chiseled it last fall after we tiled it, and the problem with whenever you tile a field is you always get settling where the tile lines are. So I don't know how well you guys can see them, but right there is a line. Right there is a line. I can see every one of them, and we just kind of float. We just bounce over them a little bit. It's a little bit rough. They'll continue to settle over the summer. It'll be worse. This will not be fun to harvest or to spray this summer. Um, but it's kind of a one-year thing, and that's what you just deal with it. And uh, we'll probably run the ripper across here again in the fall, level it out one more time, and then it won't be an issue. But uh, definitely can feel all these tile lines. Who needs a nap? I need a nap. You know, if I figured out the turn automation stuff on this so that it would just turn and drive itself... I can take a nap. Sure. Sure, we can do that. Oh, I think we're out of seed. We're darn close to it. We gotta check our tanks. Yippers! Out of seed, so I think maybe I can get enough out of this one to get us to the end of the field. That's as far as we're going. Alright. Um, I got the planter loaded up. We only have 15 acres left. So I put six bags in the planter. That should be enough. I'm gonna throw one more there just in case. Uh, we're using bag seed here. 
This variety is a brand new one for next year. So it'll be new in 23. I was able to get eight bags of it to plant and try and uh, just to get a look at it before I really start selling it. I always like to do that because I really like to plant everything that I sell before I sell it. And so this gives me a way to do that. Um, however, you guys see what I see when we look off that way? Maybe you don't. It's real dark. And so there's a line of rain coming. We gotta go, we gotta hurry. Get as much of this done, hopefully done. 15 acres before that gets here. Oh man, I don't like the looks of that. We just gotta get to those trees and we're in front of the woods now so the roads are a lot shorter so it's gonna go faster but I don't know if we're gonna make it. Yeah, I would say that's gonna blow through here any minute. Lightning to the south. Ah, uh, we aren't gonna make it. We're not gonna make it, but we're gonna do what we can here. Um, doesn't look like we're gonna get much out of that, but it's gonna blow through and probably, I don't know, depends. It might shut us down for the rest of the day and then there's more rain coming overnight maybe. I don't know, we will see. Let's see, what does it look like when we zoom out? It's, I have really crappy internet here, so it might take a minute. I think we're done here. We're not gonna finish. It's white off in the distance to the west. That's heavy rain coming. I don't wanna get caught going the wrong way or away from stuff when it just lets loose and downpours. It's not gonna last long. We're not gonna get a ton out of this. In fact, for a second there, I thought it was breaking apart. And maybe it is, but um, yeah, not worth getting everything all muddy to try and finish the last 10 acres here. We are, we are not, we're not gonna get it. We might as well just go put the planter in the barn and wait. I don't know if Dad's like 10 miles away with the food cultivator. He might need a ride. We might have to call him and see if he needs picked up. Yep, we made it to the end of the field and folded up, and it would not take long to be too wet here. So, to the barn. We made it in here. Phil's here down there, backing into the barn as well. Had to take Phil to get his truck. He's planting in this field here that Dad worked up yesterday. Looks really good. That's gonna plant nice. There's one we did a few days ago. We didn't get much rain here, but we are done planting here for today. However, I called Dad, because like I said, he's working a little ways away, and I said, hey, do you want to ride? And he said, well, I'm just gonna wait it out. Apparently it didn't rain there, or it didn't rain enough, because he's texted me a minute ago and said that he still has dust. So now I'm thinking, well, we need to go there. So radar check and uh, see what dad says, but we might load the planter up and you know, we're 75 acres there. We could go plant. It's 10 miles south and east of us, or south and west of us. So if we can go plant there, we'll go plant there. Well, we ended up with a half a tenth here, which doesn't sound like a lot and it's not a lot, but it is enough to make everything really sticky and we will not be planting here. But dad was serious. He is still working ground, and he sent me a picture, and I said, bring the planter, and he said, yes, do it. And so we're going to load up, and off we go. And uh, I was kind of looking forward to a nap. I don't know. All right, we got a FedEx delivery. I got a couple buckets of chain here, I believe. Some stuff I ordered. We needed some chain for those drags on the fuel cultivator because some of them are wearing out, and so I got, I got it in bulk. Unfortunately, changing fields means that all that corn we just put in is wrong. So we are changing hybrids, emptying the planter out here. I added a little piece of hose, three inch uh, hose to the clean out chute. Mm -hmm. It helps, I guess, I don't know. This thing, I have a love-hate relationship. Sometimes it's great, sometimes I spill more seed with it than I would without it, so I don't know. So something I have noticed this year, our seed treatment is very flaky. See all that stuff falling down there? Well, now it's done, but it, it just, seems to dust off and flake a little bit more than what I have seen in the past. And I don't know why that is, but I forwarded it on. We'll see if we hear anything. Yeah, look at all that stuff falling out of there. I don't know why it's getting like that. Like it doesn't stay attached to the seed or I don't know. It just looks different to me. I don't, it hasn't hurt anything yet. All right, we are loaded up and ready to go. This field is about 10 miles away and 10 miles is as far as you want to go on these tracks without stopping to throw some talc on it. So we're going to talc before we leave. And we 
should be good. The road's still wet there, but judging by these fields, probably could have waited another hour and finished where we were at. Too late now. We already got the planter all loaded up for where we're going and not where we were. So we will finish that later. Maybe later tonight. I doubt it. Probably tomorrow. Here comes Dad. He's on his way home from the fields we're heading to. We just made it to our field. It's the longest road trip we've taken with the 8RX, and I just wanted to get out and see what our tracks feel like. They're warm, but I wouldn't call them hot. They're not nearly as hot as they were the other day. That's, that's warm. Um, but I kept my speed down. We never got uh, over 20 miles an hour, so that makes a big difference, I would guess. Just past uh, my wife and the boys, as I was uh, pulling into the field, they're turning around, coming for a ride. So we're gonna get a full cab. Oh, we gotta hide the snacks. Do it quickly. We're already here. Oh man, it's getting crowded. <laughs> Grayson, hmm? right there. There's that rock. Go pick it up. Not, not, not right now. Yes, right now. No. Uh, why not? Because you have to carry it all the way to the farm. Hey Brock, there's rock. They found my chip stash. Thanks for those uh, golden harvest they gave them to me yesterday. So, anyway, um, we are planting. Ground is dry here. No, but it's fine. It's perfect. So off we go. Why am I not putting fertilizer on? When I click the button. Must have been me when I reached down to get chips on the end back there. Anyway, um, this field here we're putting in 102 day corn. It's the earliest stuff that we plant, and it is pretty high pops. We're planting 37,000 right here, which is seems like a lot, but that's this hybrid, so uh, it's. Hold on. Do you want more of my chips? Or... Okay, so we have a bit of an issue here. That right there, you see that? That is a vacuum reading and it's showing very, very low. That should be like 12. Um, however, we're still planting and we cannot plant without vacuum. So it is either a sensor issue where the sensor itself is bad or the vacuum tube heading to the sensor is disconnected or plugged. So yeah. We'll have to check on it, but I'm not gonna worry about it as long as we're still planting. Uh, we've, we've got some, the rose curve out here, and this is our first one going straight, so some rows are shutting off on us. That's why the red bar is there. But uh, yeah, I just noticed that vacuum sensor said zero, and I'm like, but I'm planting, it can't be zero, so we're trying to figure out what's going on there. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Tell daddy bye bye. Stop the tractor right oh. now. Get out. <laughs> Are you walking from here? Are, are you gonna come out, Mama? Yes, I gotta drive you home. Do you want me to take you up there? I don't care. I can, but if you can walk, or you wanna walk, walk, that's fine. No, you, you can run. No, okay, you, can you run. No, you can drive. Well, you gotta get to your car. I don't run, Rowling. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I would have given them a ride, but they wanted out because they wanted to run to the car, so the boys are halfway across there already and it'll be fine. It is good to see them and I love my boys but it is a lot having both of them in the cab especially with my wife and there's just there's there's four people in here it's crowded. Um, not gonna happen next year with the fifth so yeah. Anyway we are uh, what do we got done here 32 acres out of the 46 so we don't have too much left to do in this field and then we got to jump across the ditch and there's some in the back along the trees there and stuff we'll get this done no problem i think unless it rains but don't look like it's gonna rain the sun's almost out it is so peaceful in the cab by myself in the quiet uh anyway it may not look like it but we are on the last pass of this field. I kind of jumped over there and worked back and now we're in the middle because there's a bridge right over there to get us to the backfield. So I thought, well, we'll end up closer to the bridge there. Uh, field looks like so. I um, was going along and, and we were following my scripts and I got to looking at my spreadsheet. 
this one, and realized that uh, I, I put an extra 100, 130 pounds of corn in the planter so that I would have plenty and we wouldn't run out, like an extra unit and a half. And then I realized that the number that I had allocated for this field, or these two, these three fields, was almost two units short. And I'm like, oh, we might be short corn. And we're far enough away, I don't wanna run short on corn. So I adjusted the population down 2%. We went from 100% of my prescription rates to 98%, and it just cuts it back a little bit, so we're saving some seed on, on everything, and it should make us have plenty, um, hopefully. But anyway, that's what it looks like. And if I push this button, and then I push this button, it shows that we've done 46.9 acres. There's 0.94 to go. We're not gonna cover 0.94 in this little strip, but we'll be close, half of it, so. Um, and we're, we're knocking them out another field done so we jump back to the back there there is about 20 acres back there and then over there we've got a little piece that's like six acres or something and, and then that's gonna be it for tonight but we got a long trip back so all right we are uh, unfolded back here in the backfield I wanted to get out and go check on the uh, vacuum sensor on this other side over here that was showing me nothing earlier also I just got a call from Brock and he's like hey did you see the accident because he got a call, yep, right there, look. See the lights? Uh, focus. Uh, there's an accident on Serral 15, just north of the turnpike. Well, and he's like, I see that's where you're working. Oh, look, there's that little dog. That little dog was up there by the house there a minute ago. But yeah, there's right in front of those houses. Something happened, we're too far away to see it now. Anyway, back to what we were looking at. So this line right here is our vacuum sensor. And, uh, well, we clearly got a vacuum because the vacuum's pulling air out of that, through that tube, pulls air through these holes, the seeds then suck to it. This line here is just in that, and it's um, sensing how much of a vacuum there is on it. I thought maybe it was plugged up or had fallen off or something. That is not the case. Ouch. So I'm not real sure what the problem is. I'm going to try and take it off. I can't get it so I don't know it's working but it would be nice if the monitor worked too ah, fire and EMS just showed up still can't see anything maybe when we get down to the other end of this field we'll be able to see better oh no you guys can't see it because my window won't let it fall there that's a chopper it's a bad one guys life flight is landing ah no good. I'm not sure where that chopper came from, but from the time Brock called me, and he called me as soon as he heard it on the scanner, like there was no emergency vehicles here yet. He wanted to know if I saw it, because he knew I was working here, uh, until the time that chopper landed was 20 minutes. It probably came out of Toledo, possibly Fort Wayne or Jackson, Michigan, somewhere. I don't know, we're kind of in the middle of all of them, but uh, that's impressive. And I uh, just hope that everybody's okay up there. There it goes. 7.57. It was on the ground for 21 minutes. That's longer than it took to get here. I kept watching. I'm like, did I miss it? Eh. There's some cars been sitting there for a long time. Sorry, it's so... My windows are no good. Well, on a side note, the planting is going well here. We got almost 17 acres done in this field of the 20 that's here. We just got a few more passes to get to the end. And then we got another six acres to finish up and uh, we'll be out of here. I'm pretty sure we've got enough seed, although I can see it underneath there, that light yellow. Right there. Uh, we're getting down towards the end, but when the low tank warning light over here comes on, I can plant about five acres. So if we finish this field and can just do some end rows over there before that light comes on, we'll be okay. And it looks like we're a little uneven, a little more in this tank than that tank, so we may even be able to do a little bit more than that because then we can even them off and yeah. I think we're okay. Well, there's still a bunch of emergency vehicles up there, but we've got somebody walking along the ditch, another guy walking up here. You think they're looking for that little dog? 
I think that guy's carrying a net. That's my guess. So they are looking for the dog. I uh, have a little information now. Um, I asked, because they, they were like, oh, so you do know about it? And I'm like, oh, is that what caused the accident? And uh, they seem to think that it came out of one of those vehicles. Now, I saw that dog when we were finishing that front field, and I was unaware of that accident having happened yet. But it could not have been long after that, because by the time we made it back to this end of the field and we're getting ready to start this one was when Brock called me. So it's possible it came out of one of those vehicles. I thought maybe it ran out in front of somebody, and that's what caused it or something when he said that. But I don't know. I, it's been a long time since I saw it. It was... We were clear back in that corner and it was running up towards the road along that fence row. So I told him that's what I've seen. I don't know where it is, but it's been around. That one's done. That one's done. Six acres here to do. A little tiny one. And they're finally letting traffic through. Most of the lights have disappeared. I don't know if it's completely clear or not, but I think the, the scene is done. Well, we're going to make it on seed because the low tank warning light hasn't even come on yet. Well, it kind of came on and then I went on a side hill and it went off and it hasn't come back on. So the seed must have shifted in the tank. We did turn our lights on because, well, I have no competition tonight, so no reason not to. And uh, we're about done here. We are going to go out that driveway there and go that way. So maybe we'll see what stuff looks like up there. But that's the closest driveway and the easiest way to get out of here. And since they are letting traffic through, I think we'll be okay. If they were still blocked off, we would go around, but they're not. I do have a row, number 16, that's not planting. It says it's low pop anyway. I wonder if our seed's not level in the tanks and we need to just level it off. I'm sure that we've got plenty. Yeah. Well, it doesn't even look like that, but we're just going to slide that over there. We made it! Good deal. Well, there's another 75 in these three fields, and we did uh, 50, 45, something like that, in that other field this uh, morning, late morning, afternoon, before we got rained out. So, um, 125 today, that's not too bad. Driving up to the road here. It was right in front of the houses where we were working. We knew, oh, there's a car way off in the ditch there. Oh my. It looks bad. So, all we got here left is a tow truck, and there's a police officer up there, part of the traffic off. They're slowing traffic down. I got the GoPro because it's easier to hold than uh, my phone. Slow down. Show you what I can show you, I guess, as we drive past. That car rolled several times, I bet. It's way off the road. Ouch. Well, at least they had a good spot to land, I guess. Ouch. I actually made the scene. We had to transport somebody from it. Oh, you did? And Yeah. It looks like uh, that car rolled end over end. Oh, it, it, it's a mess. It, it was bad. I just I just finished and pulled out the north or the south driveway there and drove past it. And dang. Yeah, it's rough, isn't it? Yeah. At least they had they somewhere to land the helicopter. What's that? At least they had somewhere to land the helicopter. Oh yeah, nice place to land the helicopter. Yeah. Do uh, you know anything about the dog? No. Oh. Well, so right, like, five minutes before you called me, I was doing the last pass in that front field right behind the house. Like, literally right behind the houses. And uh -huh. as I was turning on the ends, there was this little dog running along the field in the back of those houses. And I'm like, huh, wonder where that came from. And I didn't see anybody out looking for it or anything. And then... Uh, uh, I went, I made my last pass to the back, I crossed the bridge, and as I was getting started in the backfield, that little dog was clear in the back, uh, still on the, still on the east side of the ditch, but it was, it was in the grass clear in the back there. And then... Oh, the dog walked a long way. Yeah. It is a little tiny one. 
And then as I'm finishing up that 20 acres in the back, like an hour later, there's two people walking the perimeter of our field and one of them's got a net and he comes back and stops and I talk to him and I asked him if he was looking for the little dog and he said, uh, oh, you know about it then. I'm like, well, I saw it. I'm like, was it, you think it caused the accident or something? I thought maybe it ran out in front of somebody. They think it came out of that car. They never mentioned that they had a dog, so. Okay, well, maybe not. I don't know. He act, The guy that I talked to acted like the, the, they thought the dog came out of one of the cars. Huh. And I, I, last I saw it, it was running back east along the fence row on the north side of that field, so I don't know what the deal was. Yeah, I know they never mentioned anything about a dog. But Were the I mean, two people in that to... car coherent? What's that? Were the two people in that car able to talk? Yeah, one of them walked around them. Really? Oh, yeah. Goodness. The other one wasn't. I, I, they, jeez. Yeah. That guy walked out of that car. Well, not out of the well, car, but he walked away from it. One of the people did, yeah. Wow. I am surprised by that from the looks of that car. Well, no, they're lucky, huh? Yeah, very. And stupid, but lucky. Yep. All right. Well, at least it wasn't somebody gawking at me. You what? I said at least it wasn't somebody gawking oh. at me at the tractor and just I, drove off I, the road. I, I, <laughs> I know, right? That, that is a pretty pretty sight in the field. I know. And I was right there. I know. Uh, That's why I called you. I, like, I passed him on my way to work. He's in that field. I I was. And had I been had it been an hour earlier or I'd been in a different spot, I probably would have saw it happen. But I was behind yeah. the buildings and it was right in front of them. And I just, I, I never saw it. And I can't hear anything from in the tractor, so... Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you next week sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See ya. All right. We just got back. Um, I grabbed our temperature gun. I'm just curious to see how warm these tracks are and how much they differ in different places. 128, 129, 130. Outside edge is the warmest, 90s, high 80s, low 80s, One, 130 is about as high as I have seen. How about the fronts? Oh, now it's dark and we can't see. Fronts are a little cooler. Yeah. So I don't know. Anybody know anything about tracks? This is 130 degrees. There it's 136. This one's a little warmer on the inside, especially right on that guy. Well, no, that's cool. Well, yeah, 145, 150. That feels hot. Maybe an alignment issue. I don't know. Anybody know anything? Tell me one way or another. Well, 155 is the highest I found on anything. I'm gonna leave that in the cab. Why are the, why are the flashers flashing? It was very mad at me for a second. Anyway, 155 was the highest I found um, on the rear tracks. The left side, there was about 20 degrees difference between the inside and the outside. The right side was about 10 degrees difference, 145 to 155. The fronts were all a little bit cooler, uh, especially the right front was like 120 was the max. So I don't know. It doesn't seem excessive to me, but anybody that knows anything and cares to have any input, let me know. And uh, I was uh, the dealer was going to check into it too, my salesman, and see if he had any idea of what excessively hot is all right thanks for watching today uh questions comments leave them down below and uh we will be back at it tomorrow tomorrow is a sunday again i am planning right now on going to our early church which is at eight and so i'll be back here by 9 30 or something rather than doing some before well, i could do some before church and then come back 
like I did last week. I don't know. We'll see how that goes tomorrow. Um, but we've got a couple of fields that we can do. We might be making the trek to Berkey uh, tomorrow and getting started with the tillage down there, maybe moving the planter, moving some of the, um, getting some fertilizer down there, that kind of stuff. In which case we won't get a lot planted, but we'll have a huge day on Monday then. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great night. See you in the morning.